Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video and today I'll be taking a look at the HKC PG27P5U. Now this is a pretty high-end gaming monitor. It's 4K, 144Hz, mini LED and so on. So let's jump in and see what this monitor is all about. HKC was founded in 2001 and makes a variety of monitors and TVs and are popular in the Asia market. The PG27P5U is their new flagship gaming monitor with specs like mini LED, 4K, 144Hz, HDR1000 and HDMI 2.1 are some of the features this screen boasts. There is no doubt this is one of the most vibrant screens I've ever used. Brightness and contrast levels come default at 60%. While filming this monitor during the gaming showcases, the screen's brightness and contrast were set to only 5% to eliminate the shot being overexposed. Screen aesthetics are clean and HKC have opted for an off-white theme for the stand and the back of the monitor. Bezels are super slim and what you'd expect on a high-end monitor in 2021. Internal bezels are noticeably thicker, which is pretty standard. Let's talk about the stand and it is quite interesting. Plenty of movements all around with height adjustments from 35mm up to 165mm, some slight built-in rotation 20 degrees left and right without having to move the actual base, tilt control and then a full rotation. The base of the stand is a simple two-prong design which sits flat on the desk. Thank god there's no third leg at the back like other monitors have. The depth of the stand from the back of the desk to where the stand ends is roughly 330mm. The full rotation is especially nice and it does rotate to portrait mode in either direction, which is good as this means you can have your inputs on either the left or the right side. The only downside I found with the stand is the adjustment up and down. Not a deal breaker for me, but it may be to some. On most traditional monitor stands, they normally go straight up and straight down. On this one, it acts like a monitor arm, it more bends up and down, which means at its top position, it will be further away and when the screen is lowered, it will be closer to you meaning you'll have to push the screen back. I do like how low this monitor can go on the stand and it kind of looks like a TV in its lowest position. The screen itself is quick release to detach it from the stand which I like and the built-in baser is 75 by 75. Keep this in mind as my test monitor arm is 100 by 100 which does mean it sits out on the monitor's casing, not inside the recess. I had no issues setting the screen up on my mount but slightly longer screws are required. A small cable management strap can be found at the bottom as well as a pop-on cover that hides the monitor's cables. RGB illumination can be found at the back of the monitor which can be controlled via the screen's OSD. For those wondering, this RGB strip at the rear isn't bright enough for any ambulight effects. HKC have done a good job keeping all the cables white which is similar to the monitor itself. The supplied cables include the DC power pack, DisplayPort cable and HDMI cable. Menu navigation on the screen is via five buttons on the right hand edge under the screen. Personally, I would have preferred a joystick control, but that's just me. I didn't see this until later, but the power button has a center dimple to differentiate itself to the other buttons so you don't accidentally press it. Navigating the menu is simple, but I do find the OSD functions and options lacking. For a flagship screen, there isn't much you can control here. Main features are overdrive control, HDR, color modes, which do include Adobe and sRGB. Moving on to more about the panel itself, and I found very little information on it at the time of filming this video. The screen is 27 inches with what I would say has a very slight semi-gloss coating. I wouldn't say it's glossy, but it's definitely not matte like other screens I've used. I found it very hard testing the screen as reflections would appear in nearly every shot. The screen uses a 1 millisecond IPS panel, features mini LED technology with 2048 lamp beads, 512 local dimming zones. Now I would admit this isn't as many zones as other screens and I'll test this later on. You'll also find a 100% coverage of Adobe RGB and 100% coverage of sRGB color spaces as well as 96% DCI P3 coverage and a contrast ratio of 200,000 to 1. As this screen uses full array local dimming or FALD, I wanted to test this out and see how much halo effect there was. This technology can individually control backlight zones. Essentially, on black images and backgrounds, the backlight behind that area can be turned off, creating a much, much deeper black. And when required, that area can be turned on again. For example, when the mouse cursor goes over. And in the screen, it has 512 zones. And for example, the Acer X27 has 384 zones. And some new screens today have over 1000 zones. But there is a downside to this and it's called the halo effect and on a complete black background you'll see a white glow around objects. In this test you can just see each zone turning on and off as the white square moves around. 
I do want to point out that this is much more exaggerated on film than it is in person, and this is showing you worst case scenario on a completely black screen. Viewing angles aren't too bad, but this is still an IPS panel, so don't expect anything too crazy. At roughly 45 degrees, details were good, but you can see brightness shift dramatically. Uniformity is what I would say was average, but then again, this is my first mini LED screen I've tested. On a slightly darker background, some darker and lighter areas were evident. Once again, this shows up much, much worse on film than in person, and these are showing you worst case scenarios. All of the above are impossible to see in most games. Frame skipping wasn't evident at all. The screen supports DisplayPort 1.4, 144Hz at 10-bit and HDMI 2.1, 120Hz at 12-bit. I tested both of these using the included cables and no skipping was seen at all. The screen doesn't have any overclocking, but it does feature overdrive. These modes included off, general and extreme. And to be honest, I couldn't really tell the difference between them. HKC state, this screen uses HDR1000. Interestingly enough, the screen has a max brightness of 600 nits. HDR1000 certification requires 1000 nits of peak brightness, 20,000 to 1 HDR contrast ratio, 10 bit color depth support, and 90% of DCI-P3. From what I can see, this screen is 600 nits with small bursts of sustained 1000 nits to achieve this certification. Unfortunately, there is no control or information on this in the OSD, unlike on other screens I've used before. But in saying this, I found HDR content looked extremely good, and this is by far one of the brightest screens I've ever used. Once enabling HDR, you do lose a few menu options. This is expected, as HDR will take control of these settings. Finally, let's take a look at the ports, and here we find the DC power input, USB Type-B, 2 USB 3.0, USB Type-C, 1 DisplayPort 1.4, and 2 HDMI 2.1. Either USB Type-B or Type-C can be selected as the host port, while the Type-C interface supports 15 watt reverse charging. Now every monitor isn't going to be perfect and I did find a few little issues with the HKC. Uh, some of the things were the local dimming seemed to be uh, misfiring every now and then when I was testing it on the uh, black background with the cursor. Some areas and some zones the backlight would flicker now I'm not sure what was uh, causing that. There were some other issues where there seemed to be a line down the center. It was kind of like that it was two panels joined together. It wasn't all the time. It was when I was looking away at something, I would look back around and I would see a distinct line. But when I tried to look for it, I couldn't see it. It's just one of those things where it started to drive me crazy because when I tried to capture it, I couldn't. And when I wasn't trying to capture it, that was when I saw it. Um, and there was also an issue with the overdrive in Extreme. Uh, when it was running for quite a bit where I was uh, testing the uh, response time and the uh, overdrive, after I let it run for about 10-15 minutes and then remove the test, I could see the little lines were burnt into the screen. Now I'm not sure what caused that. Uh, I fed this all back to HKC. They did say this was a engineer, uh, engineering sample, so they will be looking at these and hopefully rectifying these issues. It could have just been my panel. Uh, if I've tried to look for other reviews on this screen and there are literally none at all. It's pretty much just people who have bought this over in China and so on. But yeah, once that burn in the screen was turned off for a bit, it did go away. So it wasn't anything major uh, at the time, but who knows if it does go in production later on, it could be a bit of an issue. Now this comes down to price. Uh, it is pretty expensive. The only other mini LED screen I've seen that's like this, there is a ROG monitor. It is 32 inches. It does have G-Sync though. This one only has FreeSync. And that one I think is 1400 nits and I'm pretty sure that's sustained 1400 nits, not the peak 1000 of this one. I think that's about 3,000 US, uh, 3, US dollars. This one comes in at 2,000 USD or 2,900 Australian, which is very expensive. But once again, these are in a different category to most monitors that are out there. Like I have the Acer, uh, the 38X38P. That's pretty insane. But when you start using something like the mini LED, it takes it to a whole new level. Now I've been playing a heap of games on this, uh, Battlefield, Overwatch to name a few, and they all looked really amazing. It wasn't until I did the finer testing uh, with the black levels and the response time and that, I started to find those few little issues. But anyway, I fed this back to HKC, hopefully they can get those sorted and uh, yeah, they can go from there. But anyway, I wanna thank HKC for sending this out. I wanna thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.